So when my kids were in kindergarten, um, the teacher would have like show and tell day. Any, any of you lived through those experiences where your kids had to bring something in that meant something to them? Usually it was an action figure, maybe a G.I. Joe, or He-Man was also very big at that time. Well, it's Easter Sunday, and it's the one Sunday of the year that the priest gets to do a show and tell. Here am I, I couldn't really, you know, pack this in my pocket or my lunchbox, it's too big. So what is this? It's the, it's the Easter candle, right. In, when we do a baptism, every, every time we do a baptism, this is lit. So we're going to talk about this. And I also, well, you can't actually see what's in it. But you'll have to take my word and you'll see in a very short time, there's water in here. Yeah, so that's what the two things that are show, going to be show and tell this morning all through the Easter season, the church uses a lot of images of water and fire to speak about the redemption and the resurrection. The redemption that God has wrought in Jesus Christ and our redemption. The wonderful resurrection that we proclaim as a church this morning. And uh, so let's take a look at the water. We last used this, the, the latest time and the last time that we used water um, in our services here at the church was to do what? It was Holy Thursday, we used a ton of water, we had all towels out. What were we doing, do you remember? We were, we were washing feet. We were talking about Jesus' example to all of us as our vocation as Christians is not to, to be mighty and to rule over people. No, not to oppress people, not to diminish people. Instead, this water was used as slaves in the old days, used to use it, to wash the feet of guests. And we talk about how messy the roads were in Jesus' time. And so water is a washing and it's a cleansing. Last night on Holy Saturday, the, the, the church proclaimed about water and how its significance in the life and the history of our people. It talked about when Moses led the people to freedom through, through Egypt, they had to pass through water. Remember the water that they had to pass through? Did anybody see the Ten Commandments? What was the water they... That's right, the Red Sea. The Red Sea parted and the people marched through. Now, a funny thing happened. They get to the other side, and of course, the Egyptians try to pursue, according to the story, but they can't because the waters close up. And then the people had this thought in their head as they continued their march in the desert. We, we can't go back. There's no way back that even as we thought this was a great idea and we're marching to freedom, we can't go back. There's, the water has, has have closed, the waters have closed in back of us and there's no way back. That our lives have changed irrevocably. That the old life, the life of slavery, that's gone. But we don't know, we have no assurances about this new life that all of a sudden we're in. How do we even live it? How do we live it faithfully? And so God does a lot with water in salvation history. Water of washing the feet. In Good Friday, the soldier, just to make sure Jesus is dead, sticks a lance into his side and flows blood and water. Water intermingled. So yes, every time that we baptize people, we baptize with water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit to indicate to this, in many cases, a very young life, that your life is going to be different. It's not going to be the same old kind of life that people live out day to day. It's going to have significance. You're going to 
live a new life in Jesus Christ. The candle, in a way, says the same thing. The light of Jesus' life was extinguished on Good Friday. We proclaim resurrection, not resuscitation. Some of you guys saw the, the, uh, the Channel 3 news or the news report about Waterbury has a new defibrillator machine. Did you see that on the news? They slide it under and, and it pumps and compresses the chest while the emergency responders intubate. Well, that's a resuscitation, CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And what happens in a resuscitation is you're lying there and they pound on your chest, you wake up, hopefully, and then you get back to living the same old life as quickly as possible. That's not a resurrection. A resurrection is the the life of Jesus is over. He's not, in his resurrection, he comes to new life in God of the sort that, that is astounding, that the human mind cannot comprehend. And St. Paul teaches us about this in his, his epistle to the Romans. He said, are, are you not aware that those of us who have been baptized have been baptized into the death of Jesus Christ. The little babies who come here, they're all dressed in white, and people think, oh, that's purity. It's not. It's the color of a burial shroud. The Christian color is the color of a burial shroud that Jesus no longer needed because he was alive again. In this new life, this risen life, we, were, we who have been baptized have been baptized into the death of Christ. We have been buried with Christ so as to share in his resurrection. Paul wrote that in the mid-first century. And it, and it stands to us as an, instructor, an instruction about Easter. The thing that I noticed over the course of At the end of this year, this candle is going to burn way down, right? That's how candles work. They give off light, and then they slowly but but surely, the candle seems to be diminishing, but it's always giving off its light. And it's like you and I, our lives. We're all ages in this community. I can see, I can see some people who are very close to the beginning of their life, comparatively. They're pretty young. Me, you know, I've been burning for a while, so, and, and there are a lot of people like me. The job is to keep burning and to give off light. That's our vocation. As a community. And it's not our light that we burn with. It is the light of the risen Christ. It is not what we do that is redeeming the world. It is what Jesus, working through us, is doing to redeem the world. Some people think of life as their possession. They talk about it as if it's a thing. It's not. It's this process whereby, no, we burn and we give off light. It's the light of love. And that's our job every day. It's today's job. It'll be tomorrow's job. We live in a world in which the disciples of darkness are having their their way, or so it seems. Have you noticed how much darkness that that our world is offering to us? seems overwhelming. You can't turn on a television without seeing the horrors of what darkness can do. And it's not just the the darkness of hatred and oppression and violence, as terrible as that is. It is the darkness 
of indifference. Violence and hatred and oppression have great energy. Explosive energy. Terrifying energy. The darkness of indifference is the darkness that exists inside a closed refrigerator. It is dark and it is cold and it is dead. Equally powerful and it says to me that the darkness of indifference holds that it doesn't matter what happens to other human beings. Why would that matter to me? What is the antidote? That we must bring the light of love and justice and peace to what is violent and turbulent and oppressive. And we must bring the fire of heat and warmth to the coldness of indifference. Otherwise, there will be no new day. It will be the same old day that just keeps repeating. And so, in this Easter proclamation, we remember water, the water of life, and that we're not going back to the old life. It's only new life from this day on. There's no way back. I can't recover one single day of my life that is burned away. Not one. It's only my now and my next that count. And so the, our charge is to remember, remember, remember our baptism, that we have been baptized into the death of Christ, we have been baptized into the tomb of Christ, and we have been baptized into the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is what we proclaim. Christ yesterday, Christ today, Christ forever. In my time, and in the time of those who will follow me. In our bulletin today, you will find some people especially remembered by Easter flowers. And I, I see those names, and I either knew those people or I know their sons and daughters. And that's how light passes. It passes from one generation to the next generation. We have people of fire because the people who came before them were of fire and gave off their light. And we celebrate that. That's our job. So.